So you can change your text from this into that. That, by the way, is considered an embedding, which is going to be a vector list of floating point numbers. Now, see those numbers inside the embeddings? Well, they serve a purpose. See, we can compare two different vectors and see how far apart they are. When you have vectors that are going to be close together and similar numbers inside of them, that means they're going to be closely related. And see, this can help with six different tasks that OpenAI talks about on their website, including search, clustering, recommendations, anomaly detection, diversity measurement, and classification. And you'll see a little bit later on in this series how we can integrate these embeddings with vector databases, which is really important when you want to build out your large language model applications. With that being said, I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can create these in Python with just a few lines of code. This video is going to be super beginner friendly, and I promise you're going to learn a few things along the way. With that being said, let's start coding. All right, so my Google Colab notebook. First thing we're going to do, we're going to install a few things. So pip install ling chain. And then after that, what we're going to have to do is also pip install lang chain open AI. And um, I think that should be the only two. So run these and uh, it'll take probably about 30 seconds to a minute. I'll see you once that is done. All right, now that we have both of those, what we're going to have to do is bring in our open AI API key. So quick way that you can do that, import OS and then os.environ like that. Then put over here, open AI underscore API underscore key like that, then equal, and then just put your key in here. If you don't have an API key, make sure to grab that on openai.com to set up account. I covered my first video in this series, um, but your key should start with SK. Now I'm gonna just paste mine in here. I'm gonna run this cell and remove it so that way we can keep on coding. All right, so let's keep moving forward. So let's bring in a few different things. So from ling chain underscore open AI, then we're gonna import in our open AI embeddings. So open AI embeddings like that. Okay, we'll run that. And then up next, what we're gonna be taking a look at is setting up our embeddings model. So embeddings underscore model equals and we're going to say open ai embeddings and here you can define what model you want and just to show you the different models and maybe we can have a full video covering some of the different models out there I'll show you specifically on the website so go to platform.openai slash docs guides embeddings and you can see right now there's three different embeddings models so text embedding three small three large and text embedding ada002 I believe these top two ones are pretty new while this was the one that was used for quite a while. So just to show you what I would do over here is model, and then you can just put over text embedding three small. So feel free to read up on these a little bit more. Again, I may cover this in a video if you want me to do so. All right, so now that embedding is over here. And also when I make a vector database video or multiple vector database videos, uh, this might change. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to do an embedded query. So essentially what it is, is a single piece of text. So what we can do is embedded underscore query like this. Okay. And we're going to say equals our embeddings model, what we just defined, right? And then you do dot embed underscore query. Okay. So query like that. All right. And then just put in your query that you want. Now, I'm a huge sports fan. So I'm gonna put Jim Thorpe participated in what Olympic events? Now, if you know who Jim Thorpe is, make sure to put a comment down below if you also know what sports that he played. And I do have a few Jim Thorpe relic cards, not any from his playing days in the early 1900s, but uh, what a great athlete he was. So. All right, and if you wanted to see what this embedded query looks like, we can say print over here. We throw in our embedded query and check it out with all of these numbers inside. And we can actually find out the length of this as well. And I made sure to wrap this in print. If you don't, it's gonna go pretty long on the screen. So I didn't wanna show that, but you can check it out if you want to. Uh, we can just do our length over here and throw our embedded query specifically in there. And let me scroll down a little bit. And you can see it is a length of 1,537.
six. So that's the query side of things. Like it's pretty basic to build out this embedding uh, with OpenAI and LinkChain. Essentially, you create your embeddings model based off the model that's on the OpenAI website. You set up your query, you throw in your text over here, right? We embed that query, and then we have our embedding, which will be useful within our vector databases. All right, now let's take a look at the document side of things. This, the complexity is a little bit higher here. Um, let's do this first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this time, let's say embedding documents, documents, right? And then we're gonna say that's equal to our embeddings model, right? I'll just copy and paste that. We're gonna do dot embed underscore documents, right? And essentially what we can do is we can throw in multiple strings or text over here. So let's do an example where we just throw one thing in here, which is baseball, right? So we have baseball in here now. And if we wanted to print this, right, we can do print and we can just go over here to embedding documents and grab the zero position of this one, right? Because there's only one thing in here and you can see that we have all these numbers once again and maybe make a prediction what the length of this is. But I will show you, we can do a length of this over here. We grab our embedding doc that and check it. We're at 1536 as well. So that's with only drawing one thing in here. I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw in two for this next example. So we'll put embedding documents two, and then instead of baseball over here, we'll have baseball and we'll also throw in Cricket, two sports that are pretty similar. And um, we'll put Cricket on that side. So embedding documents two, great. And then if we wanna grab that length and um, we can do that for each individual one. So if we grab the length of zero, position 1536, I'm gonna grab one, right? Index out of range and that's because it's embedding documents two and I forgot to put that over here but you can see also 1536. And if we wanted to print these out, right, you can print also each of these out individually. If you want to do a little a thing a little more complex, you can build a for loop. We will be building one out shortly. But you can see I printed out uh, Cricut over here, and this is essentially what Cricut looks like uh, with the vector embedding. And um, this is where it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So uh, my past last two videos, I talked about different types of document loaders as well as some text splitters. So I wanted to integrate this with the embeddings. So let's do that. And it's a pretty good recap. And if you haven't watched those videos, make sure to, to check them out. I thought they were pretty good overall. And if you haven't checked out those videos, I highly recommend you check them out. They're pretty beginner friendly and you can pick up these concepts uh, quite quickly, in my opinion. But we can go over here from LangChain Community, LangChain Community, dot document loaders, Mint loaders. We're gonna import in a text loader. Nothing like too crazy over here. All right. Then what we're gonna do next is loader equals text loader, and we're gonna bring in a text document. Now I did cover this in another video. This was the first example we used. So uh, this is a little bit of a preview. And if you watch that video, awesome. Uh, but we're gonna bring in opeth.txt. If you know opeth, they are a heavy metal band out of Sweden one of my favorite bands. And uh, we're just gonna throw this in over here. I guess they're prog rock now, but uh, we'll throw that there. And then we can load that over here. Loader equals text loader opeth like that. Okay. And then if we wanna see what our doc is gonna be look, we can just do doc equals loader dot load like that. Okay. And now if you wanted to see what this doc look like, we can just throw doc over here. And this is our full document, right? This is gonna talk about some of the different lyrics. Um, I grabbed the song Black Water Park uh, from their famous album. I think it's 2001, 2002. I was very young at that time. <laughs> I had no idea who Opeth was until way later. Not not the golf topic, but uh, now let's bring in a text splitter because we want we want to chunk this up. So we don't want to send all this to our open AI large language model. We need to split this up. So we're gonna do something called chunking and I'm gonna use something called recursive character text splitter to chunk this up. So let's do that. So from ling chain dot text underscore splitter 
import recursive character text splitter. Awesome. Thank you for filling that one out. Then let's set up our text splitter. So text splitter like this equals throw our recursive character text splitter in here. Awesome. Now pull out a few different parameters. I'm literally just going to copy what I had in the other video on this. So chunk size, which not capital, I put this lowercase, uh, equals 500. All right. Chunk overlap. Let's not have it overlap. Overlap equals zero. And our length function underscore function equals len like that. All right. So that's our, just a very basic cursive character text splitter. Now we're going to have to set up our chunks. So chunks equals, and we're going to say text underscore splitter. And then what I didn't cover in that last video is our splitting documents. So you can just do split documents like that. And then just throw your doc in here. So doc. Now we want to see how many chunks that this specifically has length. We can put chunks, right? We built our chunks. So it turns out to be three chunks. And if you want to see what each of these chunks look like, we can throw chunks over here. And then also throw in a zero. And if, like I said, if any of this is confusing, please watch the previous two videos. I tried to explain it way better in detail over there. I mean, they're probably what, 20, 30 minute videos, um, but you'll pick up the concepts. So essentially what I mentioned, right? Uh, we're splitting this up into multiple pieces of text. This is the first chunk, right? It ends up over here. And then if we wanted to say our second chunk, which would be one position, it's our second chunk. And our third chunk, which would be this two position over here, like not much text. Um, but that's essentially like the fundamentals of chunking. So we have that now. Awesome. How do we take these chunks and then do an embedding with it? Well, let's just do a basic, like one example first. So embeddings like this, and we're going to say equals embeddings underscore model dot embed documents like that. And then you can specify what chunks you want. So I'll just say chunks zero for the first one dot page content. And you should only throw in one chunk in this instance. We're going to build out a for loop just to chunk everything over here. But um, again, we're, we're starting very basic here. Uh, so we have our embeddings over here. Awesome. And if you want to see how you can do all the embeddings for this chunking, you can just set up all underscore embeddings like this equals We'll leave this empty over here. We'll run that. And then what we're going to say is for chunk in chunks. And the first thing we're going to do is chunk underscore embeddings equals. And essentially, we're going to copy all this. Well, this second part over here. Embeddings underscore model dot embed documents. And then what we'll do over here is chunk not chunks dot page content. All right. And then one more line of code, we'll say all embeddings, right? What we called up over here and we'll say dot append. And then you throw in over here, your chunk underscore embeddings. Okay. And this will take probably 30 seconds or so to load well, actually a little bit faster than that. And uh, that is essentially how we embedded uh, these multiple chunks associated with that. So hopefully that cleared up any confusion about embeddings. And you can tell like just a few lines of code, we're able to take our strings and turn them into lists of floating point numbers. Now, if you found a ton of value in, in this video, I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Most people watch these don't subscribe, but it does show YouTube that people care about data science and AI videos and they find at least the content that I produce pretty helpful. And if you do want to check out other videos along LangChain or OpenAI, I'm building a full playlist right over here, or I'm adding two videos every single week.